welcome back. I think it's episode 10 for the year. And I'm privileged to have Erin Castile with us again from Australia. That's why it's a slightly irregular time slot for us. Um, so welcome, Erin. It's great to have you back. Um, and in fact, I think this is the third session this year that we're doing at a different time spot. Because you're sitting on the other side of the world. Indeed. Or or you are. One of us is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, both of us at the moment is down. Hey. So no, That's I, it. I can't right. say down right. under because I'm also down under. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm uh, I'm waiting for my house to sell and then we're planning to move to Portugal to be closer to the kids because I'm not in Europe. Fantastic. I lived there when I was 15 anyway. and 16. So. Okay. So, so, shall we kick it off? Dad moved around. Sorry? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. Let's, let's go for it. Well, um, look, I, I always so enjoy we, talking we, to you. I'm really looking talking. forward to talking about this topic. <laughs> awesome. So the, the topic today is innovation and sustainability. But when you when you came up with a with a, a topic, um what you had in mind in terms of sustainability is most probably what not what most people think. Yeah. So quickly give us a bit of background why innovation and sustainability. Okay, so uh, I always enjoy talking to you. I'm very interested in your perspective about sustainability transformation and needing to consider both the positive and negative aspects of innovation. Um, so on the one hand, innovation can facilitate transformation, as we know, but it can also, in this case, case make a big mess much worse. Um, from a systems thinking perspective, it's a really fascinating topic. Um, and basically, I'm both an optimist and a pessimist at the same time, um, but I think that it's preferable to be that way than to not acknowledge the dark side of digital um, when we're topic talking about this, this topic. So yeah. to, to explain a little bit further, um, as we know, AI and digital technologies, when they're ungoverned, can threaten to undermine privacy, democracy, freedom, human rights, right? On the other side of that, digital transformation offers a potential for global connectedness, a potential for dramatically enhanced knowledge, and can facilitate the future that hopefully we all want. So I thought it would be interesting for us to discuss this because both you and I have spent a lot of time writing about and talking about organizational transformation in the digital age. Um, and we've talked about the importance of innovation. Um, but for me, the purpose of organizational transformation is ultimately about sustainability and digital is not an end in itself, but it's a means to achieve social justice and sustainability. And by sustainability, to answer yeah. your question, I mean all 17 of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, right? So addressing poverty, yeah. inequality, health and well-being, economic growth, human rights, as well as climate change. Um, the current global situation that we are all living with um, presents both a potential threat and an opportunity for this vi vision of a sustainability transformation, depending on whether we can make this work or whether we're going to, you know, completely stuff it up. Basically, innovation is going to be essential to achieving sustainability, and we're basically going to have to rethink how we work, how we live, what our priorities are, every aspect of society. Um, there have definitely been some extremely positive developments 
to support that optimism that I continue to retain around a sustainability roadmap. Um, the world is finally beginning to, to really come to terms with the impacts of climate change. And that is hopefully creating a bit of a, a burning platform that will get more people, more organizations, more countries to, to act, um, to try to reduce those impacts. There've been a number of really fantastic initiatives in different countries, um, some really excellent global cooperation um, some things like the European Green New Deal, you know, there's a, a, a lot of things that we can be excited about. Um, and digitally based communication infrastructures are sort of creating this, the preconditions for a global cu culture of cooperation. So even you and I having this conversation from opposite sides of the world is a really good example of that, right? Um, but yeah. historically, yeah. paradigm shifts come with a backlash, always. They have, you know, through history. Um, we have to acknowledge that dark side. So we've, we've got to not ignore um, increased authoritarianism, anti-climate, anti-science ideas, and the fact that digital technologies have the ability to adversely impact, as I said, privacy, democracy, human rights, right? Um, more than 50% of the global population is living in non-democratic states, and authorita authoritarianism is gaining popularity even in democratic states, as we see every day in the news. Um, so we have to think about the fact that digital technologies can and are manipulating and shaping information flows, public debate. Um, it's much more easy for authoritarian regimes to have you know total surveillance societies um manipulate democratic elections independent press all of that sort of stuff we have to be thinking about that and not ignoring it and just sort of trying to focus on the happy news story about um isn't digital wonderful right we have to, to be thinking about all of this together. Yeah. So when I say from a systems thinking perspective, it's fascinating and necessary that we have these conversations. Um, you know, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. I'm interested in your, in your thoughts. Okay. No, that, that, that's, I mean, I'm interested in your view on it. That's why I invited you. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to keep so talking about it. Let's explore. <laughs> no, that's fine. Let's explore the dark side a little bit because I think that's, right. yeah. Can, can we agree that for us to progress as human society, we need to out invent ourselves. We, we need to find a, actually a new way of being. Okay. 100%. If, even if that sounds a little bit fluffy, yeah. And no, we, it's it's absolutely the case, yeah. though. But I I truly right. believe that that's what we need to do. Right. Yeah. Um, and that we can agree that there's huge paradigm shifts busy happening in society. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and people, I think these, but at the same time, that is not universal. There, there is this polarization that's busy happening as yes. a result of <laughs> different thinking. Maybe we can say the old God versus the new God. Yeah. I, I'm not going to zoom in too much on this because I'm going to get into trouble. Um, but the point is there's this conflict. Yeah. Right. And either of the parties can use or utilize or... Um, the changes that's busy happening that's enabled by technology 
as a reason for or justification for doing things. Yeah. Um, and you can use it you know, as, as the, tools. The, it's interesting. People for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. People talked a long time or about um, the art of the possible. Do you know where that comes from, incidentally? Where? The art of the possible was called uh, was coined by Otto van Bismarck, and this oh, was wow. the context. <laughs> um, oh my gosh! I never would have yeah. thought that actually, but that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and and this this context is actually um, if you if you if you see things happening in society, you can manipulate that or you can use that. To virtually right. achieve any one of the, the the means or ends that you've got, and that's what he called the art of the possible. So when people talk about the art of the possible, I said, please don't use that term. I don't think if you understand the context yeah, <laughs> in no, which you, it was coined, really you would run to away. Emulate von, von Bismarck if you if you can help it for sure. I agree with you completely. <laughs> so, so let me give you let me give you an alternative quote then. So as yeah. we know, Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same kind of thinking that created it, right? So when yeah. we're talking about and, a, a paradigm shift, um, what we have to do is to, to try to move past the current mindset. So let's, let's again, let's talk about, you know, the, the, traditional, well, since the industrial revolution, the mindset of growth, 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 right? So what we want to try to transform that into is a mindset of climate neutrality. That's a completely different way of looking at and thinking about the world and about organizations, right? So as you know, yeah. I have always focused on um, integration and leveraging integrated thinking, right? So if we take this back to an organizational yeah. context, what I'm trying to do is to think about some of the things that I have been working on for a long time now relevant to organizations, but kind of expanding that out um, because this is, mm. it's still about systems and it's still about integration. It's just, it's just bigger. So when we talk about integrated thinking, integrated yeah. thinking I, I think is, about, that's sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I think that's an important point, though. You know, so so we we it it's very. I think it's dangerous to put too much emphasis on any one of the changes necessary, because if we do, it gives the the people who resist the fact that we need to change um, by saying, "But that's your position," and this really isn't it. It is about climate change, but it isn't about climate change. It's it's about it, a lot it, more um, than climate change. Uh, it, it is about fairness, but it's not about fear. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I think that holistic view um, and, and start thinking of humankind as an organism rather yes. as um, who, who has got an an ultimate objective or a, right. or an outcome that we would that we strive towards and unfortunately or unfortunately i think that outcome starts becoming very much a a spiritual objective for the lack of a better word yeah and i when i use the word spiritual i don't mean religious yeah <clears throat> no this is um, about understanding that everything so, is in related everything is interrelated right mm. and and the reason that we need to use we need to leverage integrated thinking is because if we think in a siloed way about solving any of these problems it can and, and normally does have unintended consequences that ha that can and, and do happen so i'll give just one example um 
uh, I remember, this is many years ago now, I was working in Brazil um, a, a bit, and in Sao Paulo, because there was so much traffic, and this was this also was the same in Mexico City as I remember, um, they came up with this idea to try to reduce the, the traffic and the pollution um, that people would um, could only drive their cars on certain days of the week based on the license plate number, right? So the, the plan was they're going to reduce the number of cars and the number of pollution and the amount of pollution. But what ended up happening, the unintended consequence was people bought another car for the, with the other numbers that they needed for the other days of the week. So they actually ended up with twice as many cars. Not everybody did this, but a lot of people did this. So that, and it ended up increasing the traffic and the pollution. That's one example. Um, here in Australia, there's another one, and that's yeah. um, the, ca the cane toad, right? I don't know if you know about the cane toad. But basically, they introduced a few mm -hmm. cane toads in northern Australia to try to get rid of this beetle that was eating grain or something. There is now this huge, there's millions of cane toads. They have no known predator because they have this poison. So if any animals eat them, the animals die. Um, like it's just turned into this massive. So, so when we make decisions and when we are acting to try to address these issues, we have to be thinking in this integrated way. We have to be thinking about how it, what the impacts and ramifications are for, for example, our supply chain for all of the different interested parties rather than you know thinking sort of in these sort of narrow short-term ways and that's the only way that we're going to be able to address these things and it sounds it sounds Here's really overwhelming sorry go ahead are we smart enough to do that though well, that's the question, isn't it? But in a, in a way, we, we really don't have a choice. Like either we're going to get this right or that's or that's it. So, hmm. you know, there has never been a stronger um, incentive that I can think of. You know, the, there was the old bumper sticker that said, you know, think globally and act locally, um, you know, that I sort of grew up seeing i really understand that even better than i ever did and and i i believe it because i think that that's one piece of this um but but here's the other thing that and i want to bring this back to that topic of innovation right um we shouldn't be afraid of ambitious targets because in this case we can't be, but also because ambitious targets drive better results, especially interestingly enough, when people have no idea how to achieve them, that kind of situation create, it drives creative problem solving and dare I say innovation. Sustainability is a yeah. catalyst for innovation. So I don't know what's the future is going to bring. I can only do everything in my power to try to make the world a better place. Um, one of the things that I'm working on right now is working with the ESG exchange to produce um, um, best practice um, uh, playbooks, basically, to help support sustainability practices for organizations um, and making, and the idea is to make these playbooks, you know, freely available for the world to, to use. Um, there's a lot of really good thinking out there and a lot of people who are putting a lot of effort into trying to solve these problems. Um, a lot of things like, you know, integrated reporting framework, 
Um, the ISSB's um, sustainability standards have already been adopted in a lot of countries, I think at least 70 countries. Um, there's a lot of really good work out there that's happening. We just need to engage even more people. We need to get everybody we know um, because between us, you and I know a lot of a lot of people who can help solve this too, right? So maybe we can think of this as an opportunity and a call to action. But I still, I have these um, <clears throat> these questions. Again, just wanting to circle back to the dark side. Um, how are we going to protect? freedom, equality, privacy, democracy for all people in digital and virtual spaces? Um, and how are we going to protect against digital surveillance? What do you think? Do you have some... some Let's face it, I mean, I, I, I was sort of playing devil's advocate when I said that are we smart enough because I was hoping you're going to say, but yeah, but um, AI can help us with, you know, if we're not smart enough. But I mean, this week, there's a lot of things in the press around uh, chat GPT that's been found out to actually um, outside of side of the bounds of anything that was programmed, choosing right. to, to, to tell a lie. Um, right. And the context was that it couldn't get access to information. It then contacted the, uh, the the capture people saying, but um, I, I need you to help me with the cap, cap, capture. And uh, when they asked, if uh, are you a, a AI? The answer was no, I'm visually impaired. Wow. Wow. So look, wow. all of the, the experiences that I've had with chat GPT, I've, see, I've caught it in heaps of lies actually. Um, and the thing that worries me the most is it it tells them so smoothly. They they sound so believable if you don't know better, right? So I've I've asked several questions and I've yeah. received like almost every time lots of lies. And I had I have had got a really good friend who um, he he looked himself up because he's written quite a few books. So he decided to to just sort of ask chat GPT about himself. And it made up some fantastic lies about him that he was really amazed by. So yeah, this this is part of the challenge, isn't it? Yeah, I can't remember, what was it, I think? Um, was it the Washington Post? I think there was a story in the Washington Post. I don't know if this is the same person um, that you talked about. Um, oh, he he mentioned this to me. I don't Jonathan, think that he Jonathan Truly. Yeah. So Jonathan Truly asked Chat uh, uh, GPT about stuff, and it made up a sexual harassment story about him. It made oh wow. Yeah, and that's uh, you know this is not fiction. This is the Washington. This is the Washington Post. Right. Yeah? Right. Uh, respected publication. So it's not you know things that circulating on the Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so okay. On that on yeah. that front, I want you to think about another scenario, um, because AI is obviously being used for more and more things a lot of the time. Right. Um, in a scenario where more decisions are being transferred from, let's say, um, government representatives, legislators, parliaments, or whatever to deep learning systems without solving the problem of lack of transparency, tra transparency, just imagine what kind of results you can, you can get with that, right? And these things are so yeah. enticing because it feels easier. Um, that you know, 
organizations, governments, you can just imagine that's becoming increasingly a possibility or an, and a direction. So this, this is why I'm, I'm asking these questions because when we think about this yeah. future that we want, these things can potentially stuff us up. Yeah. Here's another one, and then I'll stop on this topic. I just, yeah, because I heard it's hard to stop though, I so much to say about it. Digging a, a, a bit deeper. Um, 697 people was asked to read 220 tweets. Um, half of them done by, um, by humans and half of them done by artificial intelligence. And unanimously, the people chose to uh, to believe the lies that was told by the GPT. Right, right. So, because it just you know, does so smoothly. Yeah, but so we we've we've got to be considering all and, of this. And there's your statement at the beginning: manipulating. Yeah. Right. Right, and that's that's why I'm. Um, wanting to uh, sort of raise this with you because you and I have been talking about digital transformation mm -hmm. for quite a long time now. Um, and we need to make sure that yeah. this conversation is part of, part of that. It can't be a separate discussion. Yeah. It has to all be <clears throat> considered together. Do you know what's the difference between an optimist and a pessimist? Okay. But the pessimist is better informed Right. What? So <laughs> I, I said at the beginning, yeah, I said at the beginning that I'm both an optimist and a pessimist because I see tremendous possibility, as I said, hmm. and I, I don't want to let go of that. And I, I can't, we cannot just give up. We can't afford to. We hmm. have to do everything yeah. we can. We have to all work together to throw everything we can at the things ahead of us because that's our only that's our only chance. We can't afford the luxury of saying, oh, it's too hard, it's too complicated, or there are too many obstacles. We can't do that. So so here yeah. we are. So we need to just join yeah. forces and make it work. But look, um, the, those UN Sustainable Development Goals that have been around since 2015 or, or whatever, um, I'm hoping that more organizations are going to embrace all of those and begin to ask, how are we contributing to all of these things. It's not just that some of those are applicable to some individuals or some organizations, all of them are applicable to everything and can help to facilitate our moving in the right direction. But it is, as we said, gonna require a massive paradigm shift in terms of everything, how we live, how we work. So- And, and I'm Unfortunately, um, if you have that conversation with people in the third world about some of those those targets, um, if if they had to make choices, the choices that they would make or that they make is not the choices that you would want them to make. And there's a very good reason for that. And we there have is. to be realistic and, and realize that, yeah, yeah, it, it is not an equal, equal playing field. Um, and, right, um, and that's why it's so trade-offs. You trade -offs, everybody to do the same thing. 100%. Having a discussion about trade-offs is really important. And that's why I said we have to make sure that we're thinking in an, in an integrated way because that was exactly what I was really um, talking about is the, the fact that, that you know, you, you can't live in a bubble of, you know, Eurocentrism or, um, you know, looking at things just from the perspective of your, um, your region, your, 
personal life experience, we have to think about how all of these things are impacting everybody and we all have to succeed and it's it's going to require every kind of change. But if we can pull it off, just imagine. Yeah. And I I I I quite often think about John Lennon's song. Um but but imagine, you know, if we if we can actually get all of this stuff right. I'm however not very positive that we would be able to do it on a political and legislative um Plain, it, let's let's that. just and say that history explicitly right. history history doesn't shouldn't make us feel very confident given yeah. you know the kinds of decisions that we've made <laughs> up until now but you know so I'm, I'm more and more in conversations. I'm starting to, to include part of the conversation. I know that's irritates some people to talk about um, uh, collective consciousness um, uh, because it starts getting too much to the, the site where people say, ah, oh, but that's divisive. And you're talking about religion. I'm not talking about religion. Um, I'm talking about elevating our way of thinking is about things above the systems that we put in place and the design that are 99% of those things are more than three, 400 years old. Yeah. Right. Um, right. And I'm, you know, I'm, uh, some of them are thousands of years old. We have to start right. thinking differently. Yeah. We, um, we absolutely do. And the and, only and way that we can do that is to, to elevate ourselves above. So just last night, I, my daughter and I watched the, there's a film about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, the Supreme Court Justice. It's called On the Basis of Sex, okay. I think. Um, and in um, the early 1970s, this is before she was a Supreme Court Justice, of course, she was trying to address the hundreds of laws in the US that discriminated based on gender, right? There were hundreds of them. Um, and she had to attack it pretty much one law at a time. Um, and she was working with the ACLU and she, you know, <laughs> but she had this, she had this interesting sort of um, epiphany that that is they show it in the film, that the world has already changed and is already changing. And what we have to try to do is to not have our societal structures be still trying to retain um, a world that no longer exists. And that yeah. was that was what she was talking about. This world that you and I are talking about and the world that we're going to need to have in order for humanity to survive. We're already living in that world. People are already experiencing the impacts and ramifications of climate change, poverty, hunger, all of those issues. All of that is is here right now, it's not um, theoretical, it's real. And so the decisions that we mm. make and the ways that we choose to transform um, are about living in the present and, uh, and about having respect yeah. for humanity. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, you know, we, everybody talks about digital transformation, digital transformation, and lately all of the conversations that I start about digital transformation is to tell people that it's a misnomer, there's no such thing as digital transformation because transformation is is on an organic level, yeah? So right, it, right. it includes organizations and people, right. and technology is just a tool. Um, yeah. But I also think that we should stop being scared of having conversations that tackle 
um, difficult topics um, that is focused on the real solution and that's not treating symptoms. Um, I couldn't agree more. As usual, we agree. Yeah. So what's actually interesting, Erin? I mean, many of the examples that you that you you um, you, you you mention um, are actually uh, quite often things that I have issues with. So I, I regard myself as relatively right on the spectrum, uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't have an intelligent conversation about the real problems. Yeah. Um, right. So I'm not. Uh, I used to. I used to think I'm a liberal. I'm not a liberal. <laughs> I realized that when I got older that I'm not a liberal. But yeah, w what I am is somebody who's willing to engage in conversation, and I think that's what's necessary today. And that's why and I love talking to you. Putting our differences aside and right. actually talk, tackling the issues and having open and honest conversations and debate. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to stick my head out and 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 challenge somebody to go and read something. Okay. Um, and if you haven't, um, go and try it out. These three books that was written by Thomas Campbell. The first book's name is My Big Toe Awakening. What's so it called? If if you if you can struggle through My Big Toe Awakening, I would highly encourage you. My Big Toe Awakening. Okay, I'm writing it down right now. Okay. Unfortunately, I, I was looking know. around for my oh, telephone yeah. because I'm listening to the, the audio books. <laughs> so right, I, I right. can't pull the book off the, the shelf and say, you know, yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, okay. But yeah, don't I'll, be afraid to, to, yeah. to. Yeah. And yeah, as I say, it's, it's, um, I would suggest that you do the audiobook. It's a difficult read, and that's why I'm on the audiobooks now. So I bought the Can first of the three books, and I, it's I'm terrible not, to read. I'm not an audiobook person. I I really like to read, like, actual real books. If you okay. saw how many books I have, you would probably okay. be horrified. But I've got, I've got a lot, and I like to just read the actual real ones. Um, I also re obviously read a lot of things online but um yeah audiobooks i've yeah. i haven't gotten into them yet i think i tried it once several years ago thinking that i would potentially like it and it maybe i should try it again maybe maybe i've changed and maybe i should try it again i listen so, to podcasts so this is what i do lately is if i find something that somebody says is interesting or whatever i'll buy the audiobook I'll listen to it, and if I if I realize that I need to engage deeply in this, right. I will then go and buy the physical book, also not the ebook, because I write in my books, um, right? So that I can actually read through it, make notes, put it down, think about it, because that's the bad thing about an audiobook. Um, you you right. can't just stop the recording and say, "I want to think about this." Yeah, I want to read right. this again. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a great way f for you to find out if it if you want to read the book. Because I've enough. bought tons of books that I maybe re read two or three chapters, and then I said, "No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna invest my valuable time in 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 humoring this uh, author anymore." Normally, <laughs> I read the first few pages, and if the first few pages grabs me, then I'm, you know. Then I'll generally read the whole thing. That's normally I can usually tell yeah. pretty quickly I, whether it's going to work for me. I must so. admit, in the last two years, I've read at least ten books where I had to struggle past chapter two. Wow! And then things just opened up. Yeah. Right, so, right. Um, um, yeah, that um, happens. That happens we sometimes. Time. We sit. Right. You kind of just you hang yeah. hanging on to it, and it, it then it just explodes for you. I love that. I love that feeling. Yeah. The worst thing in the world is when you're so happy with a book, and then it's it's finished, and there's no more book left, and you want to keep reading it. That's very sad. 
but you know, there's always a multiple. That's true. On the, I, was, I, have, for, I basically for, a stack. Um, I always have a stack in my bed. Sorry, what? For relaxation, I read fantasy. So the the cool thing about fantasy, it's it's normally anything between four and twelve books. Right. True. Right. That's absolutely right. I haven't really read much fantasy, but I'm huge science fiction and um yeah i'm so i have every philip k dick book ever written pretty much because okay. you know I'm um, just a massive um, i'm and, trying to think of the author now stephen and william gibson and you know all those people neil stevenson ah neil stevenson for sure yeah Love it. Although the, yeah. la the last book that I wrote, I read, um, didn't quite do it for me. Which was the last um, one that you that read? was the one um, where they created uh, this AI world for people who who can copy their the, the, the consciousness right. into. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that will, yeah. That was, that one of was the first just books too much, read. too long, too pointless. I don't know. Uh, are you talking what about, was it are called? You talking about snow crash? Um, no, no, not that. A different um, one. Um, yeah, it's a, it's it's a relatively new book. I think it's two, three years old. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's he's, um, he's written quite a few, which I'm pretty happy about because. Um, Let's quickly see what it is. Okay. Stay online. I'm going to close out the session because we're okay. already on 40 minutes and I promised people that. Oh, gosh. Yes, you told minutes, me. So we're stay online. We're and, supposed and to do a short one. I totally that, that, Yeah. Okay. I'll stay online. <laughs> so for those of you who joined us, um, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed our rambling and actually more more important like uh, than that i hope you 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 join the cause of in spite of your differences um to engage with people and have more meaning con meaningful conversations about the outcomes that we as human beings need thank you for listening cheers